There are times in history when heroes become forgotten. Ely Parker was an engineer, Civil War general, scribe of the war's terms of surrender, personal secretary to U.S. Grant, head of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and Grand Sachem of the Iroquois Nation. He was a bridge between the white and Native American worlds and sought peace in both. However, despite his lasting remnants in Galena, Illinois, he has become one of America's forgotten heroes. In 1828, on the Tonawanda Indian Reservation near Buffalo, New York, the full-blooded Seneca Indian, Hassan Nwanda, was born. Four months prior to his birth, his mother prophesied his life in a dream. About four months before he was born, his mother had a dream. And in her dream, she was standing in a horrible snowstorm. And all of a sudden, the sky broke open. And a rainbow appeared and it reached from, or went from where she was standing over across over to a nearby farmer's uh, land. As Hassan Nwanda grew older, he came to take the English name of Ely Samuel Parker. Parker, at a young age, overcame a language barrier, learning English food. It was because of this that he was given a great privilege of representing the Seneca Indian tribe and reservation. He traveled often to Washington, where he looked upon treaties, made in attempts for peace between the whites and the natives, and becoming a mediator between two different worlds, and began to fulfill his mother's prophecy. Parker persisted with his education while he continued to go to Washington for his tribe and was assisted in a desire to become a lawyer with the help from William P. Angel, an Indian district attorney. Although Parker possessed excellent grades, when the time came for him to take the required bar exam, he was banned from it, accused of not being an American citizen due to his race. At the age of 23, Parker was presented by the Iroquois with their greatest honor. Given the title of Grand Sachem of the Six Nations of Iroquois due to his unending and diligent service for them. It was at this time that Parker was presented with his great-grandfather Red Jacket's medal. This medal was given to Red Jacket by General Washington in 1792 as a peace offering after the American Revolution. Throughout Parker's life, he proudly wore his medal to show his past heritage and pride of his Indian nationality. After being denied the opportunity to become a lawyer, Ely Parker was forced to seek another career. He turned to engineering and obtained a job working on the Genesee Valley Canal, although he still dreamed of going west. His decision to become an engineer instead was largely because of the influence of his friend, Lewis Henry Morgan. Morgan was in the process of writing a book on the Iroquois, and Ely's help was crucial to his work. This may have been why he was so eager to keep Ely nearby. Eventually, this choice led him to Galena, Illinois. Fulfilling his lifelong dream of going west, it was in Galena where he met the people that would change the course of the rest of his life and ultimately the course of American history. Parker arrived in Galena on April 6, 1857 and stayed at the DeSoto House Hotel. Because Galena had become one of the leading cities between St. Louis and Chicago, Galena's mayor, Elihu B. Washburn, was convinced it needed a new custom house and a marine hospital. These new buildings became the responsibility of Ely Parker. Both of them proved to be a challenge. Both the, the marine hospital and the post office were pork belly projects um, given to us by our congressman at the time, Elihu Washburn. Um, we didn't really need as large of buildings as we had, but he was trying to help his constituents, and so we, he built these lovely buildings. Um, the post office we still use, of course, even at the time, though, it was considered too large and grand. What they did is they, they estimated the weight of the building and uh, dug the foundation and bought in pig leather, which was uh, very common in the area, for the, the approximate weight of the finished building. They put that uh, big lid on top of the, the pork foundation and let it sit for six months. So it would freeze and thaw and let that, that foundation settle down. And uh, after the six months, in the, in the uh, spring and summer of 58, uh, they went ahead and started to uh, take that big lid off and build the building. And uh, as a result, the building is uh, very structurally sound. Uh, many of the architects of the day came in and looked at it. And, uh, they determined that the building is, is good for a thousand years. And the Marine Hospital um, 
had started out as, as a hospital for Mississippi boatmen who were too sick or old to continue working. Well, he hit the most and only had six people ever in it. Some people in Galena used his absence as an opportunity to try to get Parker removed from the job of being superintendent over the buildings. His friends came to his defense, determined to break down the political and racial barriers that Parker seemed to consistently be facing. One of the most important acquaintances he had made in Galena was that of Ulysses S. Grant. Prior to the Civil War, Grant was working in his father's leather store. It was here where Parker met Grant, and their friendship was cemented after Parker assisted him in a fight where Grant was outnumbered. This was such a strong friendship that when the Civil War broke out, Ely Parker wanted to follow in his friend's footsteps and join the Union Army. He was told, however, by William H. Seward that it was an affair between white men and one in which the Indian was not called on to act. The fight must be made and settled by the white men alone. Grant came to Parker's rescue. He made it possible for his friend to become a captain of engineers in the Army. Under Grant, Parker kept working his way up with his incredible talents, and eventually he became his personal secretary and then acquired the rank of a lieutenant colonel. He was referred to as Grant's Indian and greatly impressed the men around him. The culmination of his work in the Army came down to the surrender at Appomattox. Ely Parker, in his elegant handwriting, was the one who actually wrote out the terms of surrender. When Grant introduced his staff to Robert E. Lee, Lee hesitated a second before shaking Parker's hand. As Robert E. Lee extended his hand, he said, I am glad to see one real American here. Parker answered, We are all Americans. After the surrender at Appomattox, Parker remained on Grant's staff until 1869 and rose to the rank of Brigadier General. On Christmas Eve, 1867, Parker married Minnie Orton Sackett, a young white woman from a prosperous Washington family. General Grant served as the best man and gave the bride away. When they got married, Parker actually missed their wedding day. There was um, some sort of um, discussion on, on what happened. He said he was sick and he had been found by another Native American who kept him until he was well, and then when he realized what day it was, he had missed the wedding day. Others said he had been tipping a little bit, and just was too hungover, basically, to go. Whatever it was, she forgave him, and they ended up getting married at a later date. In 1868, the year of the presidential election, Parker's career saw an abrupt change. Grant became president and brought many of his friends into office, including Ely Parker. Grant appointed Parker as the commissioner of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, becoming the first Indian to hold the office. Parker's first act was to rid his agency of the dishonest Indian agents who too often sold the Indian supplies and pocketed the profits. Ely and Minnie's only child, a daughter named Maud Teresa Parker, was born during this time. She grew up a tomboy who was very proud of her Indian heritage and whom Ely referred to as Awahio, or beautiful flower, in his native tongue. Parker was overwhelmed by strokes and diabetes in his late years. He died with full military honors on August 30, 1895, at his country house in Fairfield, Connecticut, and was buried at Fairfield's Oak Lawn Cemetery. In 1897, he was reburied next to the remains of his ancestor, Red Jacket, at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Buffalo, New York. This cemetery had once been part of the Granger Farm, which fulfilled his mother's prophetic dream from so many years before. After his successful life in both the Indian and white worlds, Grand Sackham General Ely Parker was laid to rest in his ancestral homeland. Despite everything, Parker's response to Robert E. Lee showed that he had learned the lesson that the rest of the country had yet to learn, and is still learning today. We are all Americans. These were the amazing words from an amazing hero that should never be forgotten.